Flame Retardant Chemicals in Child Care Settings. Hello, my name is Pali Ojea and I work at the San Francisco Department of the Environment. We are a city agency whose mission is to advance climate protection and enhance quality of life for all San Franciscans. This training will focus on flame retardant chemicals and it is part of a series called Healthy Homes, Healthy Child Cares. These trainings focus on tips to keep the kids in our care safe from toxic chemicals found in the home and child care setting. For more of these trainings, visit sfenvironment.org slash childcare. The agenda for this presentation is, what are flame retardants? Where are they used? Why are we concerned about them? What is being done to protect us? And how can I reduce exposure to these chemicals? So first, what are flame retardant chemicals? Flame retardant chemicals are chemicals that can help slow the spread of fire. They are used in certain products in order to meet now outdated fire safety regulations. They became popular in the 1970s at a time where most, when most buildings did not have sprinklers or fire alarms and when people were smoking cigarettes indoors. They are slowly being phased out of many household products because of concerns about safety and efficacy. Although they are being phased out, they're still in many products that we have in our home such as certain children's products like bouncy chairs, high chairs, play pens, electronics such as TVs and cell phones, building insulation, and upholstered furniture. How are we exposed? Flame retardants are not bound to the product. They are released into the air as tiny particles that stick to dust. The dust settles on surfaces. Children touch these surfaces like the floor and then put their hands in their mouth or eat with their hands, thereby inhaling the particles. Unfortunately, toddlers have three to 10 times the amount of flame retardants in their blood than adults do. And why are we concerned about this? We're concerned because there's been many studies indicating that flame retardants can cause some of these health problems, such as disrupting hormones, disrupting brain development, lowering IQ, increasing hyperactivity in children, increasing obesity, decreasing fertility, and even cancer. And environmental concerns are that they persist in the environment and they move up the food chain and bioaccumulate. On top of all of this, flame retardants actually make a fire more toxic. If a fire does occur, flame retardants in the building will create a fire with more smoke and soot, which makes the fire less easy to survive. So what is being done to protect us? Well, policies have changed, luckily. San Francisco in 2019 banned the sale of upholstered furniture and children's products that contain flame retardants. California passed a very similar law, which went into effect in January 2020. Many other states around the country have passed similar legislation. I'd like to note here that our furniture still must meet flammability requirements. What has changed is that they are now required to meet those flammability requirements without adding flame retardants to the product. So manufacturers oftentimes will choose to use materials that are inherently less flammable. How do I know if there are flame retardants in my furniture? Well, you can look at the label. Any upholstered furniture made or sold in California after 2014 must have a label that looks like this label to the right. On chairs, it's usually under the seat. On couches, it's usually underneath the seat cushions. This label will tell you whether or not the product contains flame retardants. There will be an X or a check mark next to the words contains no added flame retardant chemicals. Again, if you're buying new furniture now, the label will indicate that it contains no added flame retardant chemicals because they have been banned. If your furniture was made before 2014, it's not possible to know for sure whether flame retardants were used in it, although it is highly likely that they were. The exception here is furniture made before 1975, because before that time, we were not using flame retardant chemicals. How do I know if there are flame retardants in my child's products? Unfortunately, there is no label on children's products to indicate whether or not it has flame retardant chemicals. 
again, anything that's purchased new after 2020 is very is not going to have flame retardant chemicals in it. But if you are purchasing something secondhand or inheriting an item, it's a good idea to contact the manufacturer and find out when they phased out of using flame retardant chemicals. So how can I avoid exposure to flame retardants? So in your home, in your child care, uh, there are several things that you can do to reduce exposure to these chemicals. One of them is to make sure that if you do have any furniture or children's products, nap mats, things like that, that are damaged, so you can see some foam sticking out, that you replace those. Uh, you don't want to have foam sticking out of the product. Um, also, I would encourage you to make sure that children are not gnawing on things like electronics or their nap mats or anything else that's padded with foam. And if you do want to replace items that you have, such as furniture, you do have the ability to get flame retardant free foam put into a chair or a couch that you already have. The other thing that's really important to do is to remove dust. Flame retardants stick to dust. So if you get rid of the dust, you get rid of the flame retardants. We recommend either using a wet sponge, a wet mop, or a vacuum with a HEPA filter to get rid of the dust. Washing hands. Washing hands is very important because again, Flame retardants stick to dust. So if you wash the dust off your hands, you're also washing the flame retardants off of your hands and the children's hands. And importantly, vote with your dollar. Find out what kind of products you're buying and what types of safety claims they have and purchase products that are using safer materials. We have more resources at our website sfenvironment.org slash childcare, as well as more videos like these. I want to thank you for listening. And I also want to thank our funders who made this work possible, Cal EPA, Healthy Babies Bright Futures, and the Mayor's Innovation Project. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give me a call at 415-355-5005 or contact me paulioje at sfgov.org. Thanks so much.